back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. It seems like a common trend in 2023, well, actually, you know, the last three or four years, I would say, is that if you really hate somebody, the best way to get back at them is to go on Twitter and scroll back on their page until you find some less than ideal tweets that they made over 10 years ago. And then you tactfully blast them online so that vultures can circulate them and dissect them and promptly cancel them. Sadly, it really seems to be an effective strategy, even though it's incredibly wrong, obnoxious, and frankly, a waste of everybody's time. And we're seeing this play out in real time right now with some top TikTok creators, London and Olivia. Before we dive into their story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. All right, so London and Olivia are a lesbian couple on TikTok. They have a very successful like joint couples page. They're from Atlanta. They're very much Southern bells. They post videos of their outfits and their beautiful home. It's like very basic lifestyle content, relatively uncontroversial, I would say. And a lot of attention was on them last week because it was their wedding. And people were calling it like the TikTok royal wedding. It was all that was on my For You page for about 24 hours. Like it was a huge elaborate event. People in Georgia were even like driving by their venue, taking videos, hoping to see them in their dresses. People Magazine covered it. But in the midst of all of that happy, yay, People Magazine wedding goodness, somebody decided that they had had enough of London and Olivia. And they decided to strike in the middle of their wedding. So this was targeted. It was tactful. It was very specific timing in the middle of the wedding. Screenshots from London's old Twitter account were posted onto Reddit and then began circulating online. Now, a lot of these screenshots were promptly taken down and removed, but there were hundreds of tweets of her using racial slurs like the N-word from 2012 to 2014. But I didn't even see the tweets first. I had no idea what was going on. I first heard about this because of their apology video. Just funny how that works. Like I had no idea this was going on. I would have moved on with my life, you know, seeing their wedding videos, but I saw their apology video. So here's a small taste of the 10 minute long apology video they posted on their TikTok story. Been some tweets of mine that I learned about yesterday back 10 to 12 years ago that had resurfaced. That's not who I am, who I was as a teenager. Just want to acknowledge and recognize that I am completely and utterly disgusted and ashamed and honestly embarrassed at how normal it was for me to speak that way on, on Twitter and to, I don't know, for my friends and I to address each other that way or for me to sing along in rap songs and that's nobody else's fault but mine. Now, before we get into my thoughts on all of this and their apology, because this was posted to their TikTok story, not their page, the original comments that, you know, populated through the story as well as the video have disappeared because they disappear after 24 hours. And many believe that this was an intentional move. They did not want this to live on their page forever. They wanted to apologize, move on with everything. But of course, the internet lives on forever. They should have, you know, just learned that because of all of these tweets resurfacing, but I guess they didn't. Anyway, the apology has been clipped and reposted countless times now. One person said dressed like the wrong side of the Civil War. A lot of people were commenting on the outfit that she was wearing, like that was such an intentional choice. She's trying to be all like childish and cute, like we're going to ignore it or whatever. I don't know. I don't really care how she's dressed. They're Southern Bells. They wear silly little outfits all the time. Somebody else said being a teenager excuses what she says. The math not mathing LMAO. I'm not surprised though. Somebody else said whoever sat on these tweets until the day of the wedding is a menace. Clearly it's personal. I 100% agree with that. Somebody else said I will never understand why people in general, but especially famous people don't review their digital digital footprint. Oh! Like, comments like this always strike me as odd because if you had never seen those tweets, if she had, you know, been able to wipe them from the internet forever and nobody ever found them, would you be okay? Like, it's not impacting you in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to talk about it more later, but it just interests me because it's like you obviously just care that they have resurfaced now that they were actually tweeted in the first place. Like, they're as sneaky as your ISP watching your every move, which is why you need ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in the car while you run into the gas station for a quick snack. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine if you live in a safe area, but what if you come back outside to see somebody driving off in your car? It's better to be safe than sorry with ExpressVPN. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, or airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data like your passwords or your financial details. And it doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed. And these hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling your personal info on the dark web. To stop this, ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so hackers cannot steal your sensitive data. And the best part is ExpressVPN is so easy to use. You just fire up the app, click one 
one button to get protected. Plus, it works on all your devices, your phones, your laptops, your tablets, and more, so you can stay secure on the go. In addition to working on all your devices, ExpressVPN also works no matter where you are in the world. I have been using it while in Hungary. It is still so fast, so effective. You guys will love it. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash cooper, and you will get an extra three months free. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash cooper. Now, speaking of hackers, there is a chance that London could have been hacked considering this was a deactivated account. So somebody had to do some serious sleuthing to find these tweets. Maybe they found them, threatened her with them. She got rid of the account. I don't know when she would have gotten rid of the Twitter account. You can see on the screenshots that the insights are there, like when you look, and that's a newer Twitter feature. So all of this must have had to happen in the last year or so, in my opinion. Anyway, it's just very, very odd. Again, seems targeted. And many people are speculating that the person who leaked these images has been sitting on them for months and months waiting for the right time to drop, which is just disgusting, in my opinion. But the fact that this was a deactivated account from a decade ago did not matter to many people. And obviously, a lot of folks are angry. At first glance, I was like, oh, I would probably like their content. And then I found out that one of them is racist. The Cut Magazine did an article about it. If you were like, what are you talking about? A lot of people in the comments <clears throat> who are white were just like, who cares? Why is this news? But I care. You don't care that they could be perpetrating, um, perpetuating racist ideologies, racist thinking. You know what I'm saying? Using their platform with a lot of followers to push racist propaganda? All they do is post silly little outfit videos and what we wore today to go see my dad at his office. You think that they are making people racist because of their silly little outfit videos? Because they're Southern and they're wearing floofy dresses and shirts with big collars? Come on, it's not like they are leading people in a cultural movement. I care that someone I could be supporting online could really hate me just because of the color of my skin. I care about that and I would want to know if someone is racist because that impacts how I navigate as a black woman. So I just think it's so privileged for white people to be like, I don't care. Of course you don't care because their racism and their racist comments don't offend you, impact you or bother you. And that's so problematic. <laughs> It was so profound. Thank you so much for that. You also could let it go. You don't have to follow them. It's really not that deep. And one of the things that always confuses me in these situations is how personal everybody takes it. London and Olivia specifically let them down. They're so hurt because of things that these influencers that they don't know did, as if they owed something to a random person on the internet. Were those tweets great? No, they weren't. They were not ideal. Were they maliciously intended? I don't think so. If you go read them, they sound like a stupid teenager being dumb and trying to be edgy with her friends online, not thinking that she would ever be a celebrity with people tracking down her past and posting them online for everybody to see. Unacceptable! It shouldn't impact any of us. If her tweets are seriously taking a toll on your life in any way, I'm sorry, that's a you problem and you should probably go touch grass. But anyway, here's a different take on the situation that I also want to highlight. London and Olivia, I literally love them. Like, love them, love them, love them, love them. What London did was wrong. She was wrong. She admits she's wrong. She apologizes because she, what she did was wrong. I mean, like, can we just forgive her? No, that's a crazy idea. I don't know what you're talking about. In 2023, you don't forgive and forget. You remember and cry about somebody that you have never met who is online, cancel them into oblivion and move on with your life and then you forget. When you are a child or a teenager, you are whatever is around you. You don't have any, you know, control of your surroundings. When you are an adult, you can actually be the person that you want to be. As an adult, as she is now, I do not see any of those characteristics that she carried when she was a child. That's all I have to say. Her coming on here and apologizing of course, that's what everyone should do when you hurt somebody's feelings, you apologize. But I don't think she's one of them. You know what I'm saying? I feel really, really terrible that, you know, she's getting married. She's supposed to be having a great honeymoon. And this resurfaces. Like, let it resurface when she's at home in Georgia. You know? So that's another it for me when i was a teenager i did i did a lot of wrong <laughs> things and i hope this is not <laughs> blow up so someone goes and finds all the wrong things that i've done because i did and i apologize for them but i'm grown now 
I pay my own bills and I can be accountable for them, okay? This girl's getting ahead of it. She's like, I'm apologizing for whatever it is you find. I don't wanna talk about it. We're just gonna have it be done. But I did like this video because she actually shows some nuance and some empathy, which you rarely see online these days because issues are so black and white and everybody is just fueled by emotion. Like, yes, this is a complex situation. We're dealing with somebody's life and somebody trying to blow up her life. Now, there is one point that I think is worth talking about that I did not agree with in this video. When she kept saying, now don't worry, she's not one of them. She was definitely talking about conservatives. Like 100% she was talking about conservatives. So as long as London is not some scary, terrible alt-right conservative, then she is willing to put all of this aside and forgive her, ignore the situation, nice and consistent per usual. The response to videos like this, forgiving London and saying everybody should move on, were all over the place though. One girl said, girl is a person of color, this is crazy. And the creator responded and said, girl, how? Like for real, what could she have done to make this better? She made a mistake. She specifically addressed the black community and she took, and then they go on to say, she, you know, she took responsibility and accountability, whatever. But on the other end of the spectrum, somebody else said, agree, if people are still criticized for actions they have made in the past, why would anyone ever put forth the effort to grow and do better. Somebody else said, racism is not a phase that's excusable. Y'all are so chronically online that you literally sat here and defended a stranger that you don't even know. So obviously people are still upset. I also thought this was a good take to share. I personally do not like cancel culture. I don't. I really just, I don't like it. I don't like Controversial people statement. bringing up things from 10 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, and bringing it when people are at the height of their lives to bring people down. I'm not about to sit here and pretend like y'all didn't know this girl was saying these things 10 years ago, five years ago. It feels as though y'all waited or whoever brought this up waited until she was at a certain point in her life for now the internet to blow up on her. I used to believe in certain things that I look back and I'm like, that's fucked up. Like I probably shouldn't like, ugh, like, you know what I'm saying? This TikTok has way too much common sense for this world. Way too much. She's spinning too many facts. Imagine having empathy. Imagine looking at a situation with any kind of nuance. Imagine believing that people could change. Not scientifically possible. Shocking. I'm saying that this whole situation is annoying as fuck because it keeps happening to so many people who are in the height of their careers that their past is following up to them. It's like, damn, bro, I was 16. Cancel culture is so annoying to me. Like, it's just annoying. And everyone's putting their two cents and like, oh, look, I have to, she's so racist. And I'm like, bro, like, it's been 10 years. Y'all wasn't even watching her. Like, y'all don't give a fuck about her until today. Like, what's, and this is like not even brand new shit. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Like, this is what they do. So why are we making videos about it? I don't understand. Cancel culture is annoying is my new favorite phrase. Somebody commented and said, I'm horrified at the jokes I made when I was a child. And when I was around people, I have outgrown. This is so important. Another person said, I feel zero connection between me and my teenage self. I can't even grasp that I was that person. Changing from a child to an adult is so profound. Somebody else said the most logical and thoughtful response so far. Thank you. This was the best response I saw in this entire situation because everybody had their panties in a bunch and were yelling and breaking down about it, which was just ridiculous. Now, at some point in her apology video that we watched a clip of, her new wife, Olivia, jumped in. You know, she was the one that was sitting there all sad and upset. She jumped in to say that London's actions were disgusting and it was just an ignorant mistake and that they had to talk about it, a serious talk about it. And then she sat there, you know, just looking pissed for the entirety of the 10 minutes. But then, within hours of that apology video coming out, the news broke that, wow, <laughs> Olivia, as well, the wife, had also tweeted out racist slurs at some point in her past. Just watch this video. Olivia sat up during London's apology called it disgusting, said it was disappointing. Olivia, what's this? To me, it looks like you are lobbing the N-word around as well. There's two things that could be happening here and both are just really indicative of how pervasive anti-blackness is. Like one, Olivia knew that she had been using the N-word when she was younger and she sat up there and she denounced London for it and she was like, well, at least my reputation is intact and no one will ever find out what I did. The other option is that she forgot she ever did it. That anti-blackness was so woven into the way she lived her life that she just gets to shrug it off. Or maybe it's not anti-blackness, maybe it's just doing things as a teenager and not remembering every single tweet that you made, every single comment that you made, every single song that you sang along to because it was 10 years ago. Crazy, crazy thought. Maybe it's that we just grow up and we move on and we forget things, which happens literally to everybody. But yes, Olivia did tweet that so she can step off of her, you know, PR contrived high horse. Everybody says stupid things. Everybody makes mistakes, including her. But wait, 
Dave's Blois. Guys, we are still not finished with this story because then, after all of this, after London's tweets and Olivia's tweets, people got wind of the fact that their beautiful, amazing royal wedding venue was possibly a plantation. And this obviously did not help their case. The London and Olivia situation should be a testimony to one thing and one thing only, and that is there are spiritual consequences to visiting and getting married on plantations. This is nothing but an ancestral clapback. There were serious videos about this. People being like, yep, those are the consequences. They had a beautiful wedding at a plantation. That's what they get. Like, that's karma. Are you kidding me? Like, are you actually being for real? There were countless videos about this, and then people were quickly, you know, trying to research the venue, posting, you know, videos about its history. And I think that it eventually came out that the mansion was actually not a plantation. But by that point, the internet had done its job. The rumor mill had worked. That information was out there for good. Nobody can change people's minds. Now, in general, I think you guys know my take on this, but I think that there is just an overreaction about this entire thing. It was over 10 years ago. Teenagers are stupid. They say dumb things to sound cool or win points with their friends and teens 10 years ago. Definitely. We're not thinking about getting canceled if one day people were going through their Twitter after they went viral and became influencers. What teenager 10 years ago was thinking about that? I certainly was not. And if you were having a breakdown over two creators that you do not even know having a past, then you need to calm yourself and sit down because your reaction sounds like a you problem. No one is perfect, and I'm sure that you wouldn't be happy either if malicious people online were digging through your old accounts to try and attack you. So let it go. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.